we're now going to look at compound inequalities. In other words, how do two inequalities work together? So to start with, we want to define the intersection and the union. The intersection is defined as what two sets have in common. It's also typically called an AND, and its mathematical symbol is this upside-down U-shape. A union is what is in either set. And it's typically used the word OR, and it's a right-side-up U. And so to demonstrate this, we're going to take a random sampling of students taking a math class. So here's our students. And I want to build a set, and let's call this set A, and it is all of the females. And so I'm going to abbreviate just a little bit. I'm going to have the set be composed of Grace, Sophia, Mary, Nancy, and Teresa. And then I'm going to make a separate set, B, which is everyone younger than 30. So this set's going to have Grace, Sophia, Kevin, Jack, George, and Teresa. And now I want to know who's in set A and B. Who's in set A and in set B? So this is an intersection. What do they have in common? So in order to make it into the set, they have to be in both sets. So we're going to look at this and we're going to see, in other words, we want to know who is both female and younger than 30. And so we're going to build a new set. And this is the A intersect B set. And it's going to have Grace, Sophia, can't have Mary or Nancy because they're not in B, can't have Kevin, Jack, or George because they're not in A, but Teresa's in both. So that's, these are the three people that are in both sets. Likewise, if I wanted to know who's in A or B, this is the union, and I want to know who's female or younger than 25, and so I'm going to get George, Sophia, Kevin, Jack, Mary, Nancy, George, and Teresa. Notice that if they're in either of them, they're in the OR. So unions get bigger, and intersections get smaller is another nice way to think about this. Just to look at a few more examples, suppose that we have A is the set three, four, five, six, seven. And B is the set, six, seven, eight, nine. If I want to know what A intersect B is, I simply look for what they have in common. They both have a six and they both have a seven. So my intersection is just the set six, seven. My union though is, if it belongs in one, it, it belongs in both. So we just take the first one, and then we just add who's missing from the second one, and we have our union. The last one that we want to look at is what if we have some intervals? So what if we have the set builder notation, all values of x, such that x is less than or equal to 7, and that's a, and b is the set of all x, such that x is bigger than minus 1. And c is the set of all x such that x is less than 3. And so what we want to look at is the intervals over which these are true. And so we're going to start with looking at converting these into interval notation and into graphs. So less than or equal to 7 goes from minus infinity to 7 with the square bracket. Bigger than 1 starts at minus 1 and goes to infinity. 
and less than 3 is minus infinity m3. And so if I want to know what a intersect b is, I want to know all the values smaller than 7 and bigger than 1. So minus infinity to 7 intersect minus 1 to infinity. So the first question is, are there numbers that are smaller than 7 and bigger than minus 1? And if we can think of 1, then we, have, we know there's an answer. And there is, and we know that answer is everything from minus 1 to 7. If I wanted to know instead what's in B or C, then we're going from minus, whoops, minus 1 to infinity or minus infinity to 3. This one may be easier to look at as a graph. So here's 0. If I want to know bigger than minus 1, or smaller than 3. What I want to know, since this is a union or an or, anything that's shaded is part of the answer. And so notice everything is shaded. That means my answer is minus infinity to infinity. So using a graph or using logic, we can think this through and we can find our intersection or our union.